Hey guys, welcome back to another part of What If Goten Was Born First. In the last part, we covered everything right from the Cell games all the way to the beginning of the Majin Buu Saga. There has been some major changes I've made in the last part. Nappa and Vegeta have become bodyguards slash babysitters to Brock. Android 16 survived and now has a nature reserve, which 17 works at. Goten does not date Videl, instead he dates Ursa. We get a surprise entrance in the tournament by a surviving Cell Jr, who I've dubbed as Jr, so I don't have to say Cell Jr all the time. And one big thing I didn't really mention in the last few parts is that there's no Dragon Balls currently on Earth. Dende never came to Earth, he's still on Namek. With that quick summary out of the way, let's begin part 7 of what if Goten was born first. When Goten was assaulted by Spolpovich and Yamu, the gang head after them. In this timeline, Krillin does not go with them. While Shin is healing Goten, with Ursa standing next to him, worried, upon getting healed, Goten hugs Ursa, telling her that it's fine now, he's okay. But before he leaves, Goten tells the kids to stay behind and not follow them. But Gohan and Bra protest, saying that they want to be there, the more the more, the merrier. But they're held back by Android 16, so, so they're not allowed to leave. Upon catching up with his friends, we get to meet Deborah. And you know what that means. Kabito dies, Piccolo and Nappa get turned into stone. And it's up to them to kill Deborah and turn Nappa and Piccolo back to real human beings. Or I guess, back to normal. When they get into the ship, Junior takes on Pui Pui as he's trying to show off his energy to Goten. You know, trying to, trying to show him how strong he is. Although he just took out Pui Pui, which isn't much of an accomplishment. Goku still takes on Yakan and easily beats him, more or less. Still the same way it goes in the original timeline. And finally, Goten fights Deborah. Vegeta does not get to fight yet, but he will eventually. Unlike Gohan, Goten is able to easily fight and defeat Deborah. However, he does not kill him. Instead of killing... Goten asks him if there's any way to revert his friends without killing him. At this point, Junior begins to basically ridicule him for being such a nice guy and having a soft heart. Goten and then Junior get into an argument, and while they're arguing, Deborah contacts Bobbity via telepathy. Deborah tells Bobbity that the big blue bug man will work just great. Goten then turns around to Deborah and is about to blast him to get his friends back to normal. But just then, Junior screams out in pain. He falls to his knees, holding his head. This distraction allows Deborah to get teleported away with a smirk on his face. Although Junior struggles, he ultimately stands up with the Majin symbol on his forehead. The five of them then are teleported away to a desert plain at Goku's request. When they are teleported, Goku and Goten transform into a Super Saiyan 2. Goten tells Vegeta to go with Shin to stop Majin Buu from being hatched. To which Vegeta can sense Majin Jr's energy. He knows he's no match here. So he goes with Shin. Before they fight, Jr states that he can finally finish what his father started. Goku standing side by side with his son remarks that this reminds him of when they fought Frieza. Check out part 3 for that in the description down below or in the playlist. Meanwhile, with 18 actually winning the tournament this time around, Gohan, Bra, Yamcha, Krillin, 16, and 18 make their way to the battle. They would run into the stoned Piccolo and Nappa. Bra, upon seeing Nappa, begins to cry. Remember, Nappa and Vegeta are like her second fathers. Uncles, if you will. Uncle Nappa and Uncle Vegeta. She is comforted by Gohan and Yamcha, telling her that everything will be okay. Yamcha tells her that they'll find a way to turn him back to normal. 
aka the Dragon Balls. She wipes her tears and puts on a brave face. Sixteen and Yamcha carefully pick them up and take them to the lookout. But back to the battle where Goku and Goten are barely able to hold their own against Junior. Because he's like really strong right now. So it's going to take them working together like they did against Frieza to even hold their own against Junior. The fight climaxes with the three of them charging up a Kamehameha until Majin Buu finally gets hatched, which stops them from fighting. Cell Soul knocks out Goku and Goten, stating that he wants to finish this later when there's no threat of someone else coming in and interrupting their fight. He then heads out to meet this mysterious Majin Buu. When Junior arrives where Majin Buu is at currently, he kind of starts making fun of Majin Buu, calling him a mindless child, only taking orders from someone, and it kind of, yeah, kind of like what he was doing back in the Cell Sagas when he was listening to his father, giving him orders. And this results in Majin Buu pretty much killing Bobbidi a lot sooner than when in the original timeline, because Goku was the one who basically told him somewhat similar things. So in this timeline, it's, it's just all Junior. It's just Junior making making fun of him for the for that. Once Bobbity is disposed of, these two start getting into a fight. Now the fight between these two monsters is pretty much on an equal level. However, thanks to Junior's much higher intelligence, he gets the edge over the boot. And because Boo is starting to lose, he starts getting angrier and angrier. This gives birth to Evil Boo much sooner than normal. Evil Boo once again absorbs Fat Boo and becomes Super Boo. And because of Super Boo's much higher power level, this means that Super Boo can pretty much send Junior flying into a nearby mountain. Majin Junior tries to put up a fight but is unable to really fight him as Super Buu at this point is just much greater than he is. At this point, 18 and Krillin deem it too dangerous for the kids to even get involved, so they head back to the lookout. However, Super Buu begins to grow tired of fighting Junior, so he charges up a small vanishing ball and sends it at him. Super Buu's small vanishing ball creates a giant crater in the ground and unable to sense Junior's energy, Super Buu begins to just freely roam the earth as he's got no real purpose because he hasn't fought Goku and had that promise of some really strong dude showing up one day and well the next day and fighting him. So Super Buu, what he's doing at this point is just really turning people into candy and eating them until he either eats everybody or he gets bored of this planet and decides to blow it up. After some time has passed, Goku wakes up and he takes Goten to the lookout where everybody is waiting for them. Goku, with no real choice, begins teaching Bra and Gohan the fusion dance. Why not Goku and Goten or Nappa? You may be asking. Well, Nappa's so much bigger than him, which makes it kind of questionable on whether the fusion would work or not. So he wants to be 100% safe. And Goten is still unconscious of all things. I think Nappa would definitely be looking at how they do the fusion dance, but I don't think he really would want to do it. He's still the same after all. Once Goku starts teaching the basics, I think this is when a really messed up Junior shows up. He says that he used up too much energy in the fight and isn't able to fully regenerate. So he's gonna have to stick with them, whether he likes it or not, to fully heal. Now with Bra and Gohan being much stronger than Goten and Trunks, and with Goku's guidance, the fusion goes off a lot smoother. No fat fusion here. 
Once they perform the fusion just right, we get the fusion of Bra and Gohan. Brahan. With the power that Brahan is letting out, it attracts a certain pink blob, Super Boo, then races to the lookout. But this power also awakens Goten, and he walks out where everybody else is looking at Brahan. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any questions, comment down below and ask them because I'll be willing to answer. I know that one question I'll probably get is why didn't Goku go Super Saiyan 3 during Majin Jr.? Well, I think it's because he, he would want to because as I stated, Majin Jr. is as strong as uh, Majin Buu. Well, I don't think he'd have the chance because like I said, he, he was on par, he and Goten combined were on par with, not really on par, but they were barely able to handle Majin Jr. So I don't think he would have enough time to go through the transformations. Anyways, this is where I'm going to be leaving it off. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later.